Hello everybody and welcome to this video tutorial for ANSYS Discovery. In this tutorial, we're going to study fluid flow in an air intake system, which includes a filter. Let's get started. When you launch ANSYS Discovery, you'll see this welcome screen. I encourage you to go through all the content in this welcome screen to get familiar with the ANSYS Discovery user interface. I'd like to especially point out these very helpful interactive tours which walk you through several examples in a step-by-step -step fashion. Okay, once we're done with the welcome screen, you can click here to open the home page. Let's import a geometry by clicking Browse and Open Geometry File. Navigate to the appropriate folder and uh, select the file that has been provided to you as part of this tutorial. I want to point out that Discovery can import many different CAD formats. So in this example, we're going to use the geometry called air intake with filter getting started. OK, here's the geometry we're going to use. Now, the first thing I want to point out is that by default, ANSYS Discovery will launch in Explore mode. You can see this at the bottom of your screen. In Explore mode, we're using our fast GPU-powered live physics solver. But for this particular tutorial, because we want to model fluid flow uh, through a filter, you need to switch to refine mode. And you can do that by clicking here. In refine mode, we're going to be using our tried and tested fluent solver, which includes the required physics to model a filter in a fluid flow simulation. Now, this CAD model that we have provided to you includes not only the solid bodies, which comprise the air intake system, but also the fluid bodies. So we're interested in just the fluid bodies. So let's hide the solid bodies by clicking on this icon in the geometry tree on the top left. OK, we have hidden all the solid bodies. And you can see uh, the fluid domain. Now, the fluid body has been split into three. And if you expand the fluid component by clicking there, you will see that we have three bodies, the fluid filter in the middle, and two separate fluid bodies on the top and the bottom. Please make sure you take a look at our in-depth tutorial to learn how to create these fluid bodies from scratch. OK, let's start setting up some boundary conditions. There's a couple of ways to do this. The first way is to use the icon in the ribbon for fluid flow here and select the flow condition. Then select this face, which is going to be our inlet. You'll notice that the inlet condition is selected by default here. And we're going to choose mass flow rate on the right side of the heads up display. So we're going to use a value of 0.1 kg per second. And you can hit Enter, or you can click this green uh, check mark. You'll see on the left side, under the physics tree, the flow inlet has been applied. Now, um, you can dismiss this heads up display by simply hitting Escape two times. Now, let me show you another way to activate the heads up display. So we're going to do that by selecting this face. This is going to be our outlet. Let me move this model a little bit over. And you'll notice this little icon over here. Um, this is called the hex. And if I click on the hex, it exposes the halo. The halo is just an easy way to access the most commonly used tools. So you'll notice the icon for fluid flow conditions. And then let's select the icon to apply a flow condition. Now, this is an outlet. So just click this drop down menu and select outlet and accept the default value of uh, 0 Pascal for a pressure outlet. Now, I want to point out this heads up display. You can just click this icon and click and hold and drag this out of the way if you want. If you click that icon again, it snaps back to the original position. OK, so we're done assigning the outlet, so click the green check mark. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to assign this um, pink body in the middle as a porous media. A porous media is the way in which we represent a filter component in a fluid flow simulation. So select the pink body by either selecting it from the um, tree on the left or by triple clicking the body. Okay. 
Now you'll notice this icon. This is the icon where you can apply conditions for a porous media or a filter. So let's select that. Okay. Now you'll notice that we have um, some new options on the right side of the heads up display. Now, this is where you apply resistance coefficients, which models the resistance that the filter applies to the flow. Okay. Now, by default, the resistance is isotropic, meaning the resistance is the same in all directions. But in this case, we want to um, apply a condition such that there is less resistance in the direction of the flow uh, going from top to bottom and more resistance uh, across the filter. So to do that, click here and choose bidirectional. Okay. Now, um, in this example, we're just going to use some values for the resistance coefficients that I'm going to give you. But please make sure you look at our handy Excel sheet available for download, uh, which allows you to calculate these coefficients based on your test data or supplier provided data for a filter. So in this case, we're going to use zero for the streamwise viscous. We're going to use 500 for the um, inertial streamwise. We're going to leave it at zero for the cross flow uh, and choose um, 50,000. So you can see that in the cross flow direction, the resistance is much higher. Okay. Now you can hit enter or click the green check mark. Now you'll notice a little icon shows up in the middle, which indicates the direction of the streamwise flow and the cross flow directions. The blue arrow represents the streamwise direction. Now remember, the streamwise direction is the direction in which we want less resistance, and it's obviously oriented in the wrong way. But that's OK. Click this arrow on the HUD, and then select any vertical edge. So let's select this one, and you'll notice that it realigns itself. So now the direction for those resistance coefficients is set correctly. There's going to be less resistance in the direction of the blue arrow and higher resistance in the direction of the pink arrows. So we're done. Now, while we have this heads up display open, I also wanted to point out that at any time you can hit F1 to invoke the overlay help system. So if you mouse over, you get lots of information on these different icons, as you can see here. And you also have links in blue, which takes you directly to our online help. Now you can exit the overlay help by hitting F1 again, or by clicking this uh, X symbol on the top right. OK, so we're done with applying porous media. Let's hit, hit Escape two times to dismiss the heads up display. OK, now we need to set the appropriate material. Uh, by default, it is liquid water, but we can change that by double clicking on the physics tree and then using this drop down menu and selecting the standard air. Now, uh, based on your license level, you may see more materials showing up in this list, but by default, you just have a, a small list. And of course, you can add to that using the user defined fluid option. But for this tutorial, just choose air. Okay. Now let's hit escape two times to dismiss the HUD. And we're close to being done. Uh, before we move on, we need to do two more things. We need to specify a local fidelity sizing. What this does is ensures that the mesh throughout the domain is of similar size, which is one of the requirements when you have a porous media simulation like this. So first, let's hide the two blue bodies. You can do that by selecting a face from each one of those bodies, right-clicking and saying hide. Okay, you'll notice in the tree, those two bodies have the symbol indicating that they're hidden. Now select this face and this face in the filter and choose local fidelity. Let's apply a value of 5 mm. Okay. Now I want you to um, show those two bodies you just hid. Easiest way to do that is just to click on these two icons in the tree and then hide the filter body. Okay. So similarly, we're going to select this face and this face. These are the corresponding faces on the fluid bodies and apply a value of five millimeters to this also. Okay. And now we're done. So we can just hit escape two times. And let's turn the fluid filter body on again. 
Now, essentially what we have done is we have ensured that we have the same mesh size uh, at this location on the filter and these two locations on the corresponding fluid bodies. Okay, this is just a best practice in computational fluid dynamics. Okay, the last thing we need to do before we actually click solve is to set up some monitors. So let's click this face and then let's use the hex to turn on our monitors. The variable we're going to use is static pressure. Average static pressure is okay. So hit the green check mark. You see this little chart pop up. Okay. Then let's hide this top fluid body. Then let's select this face. And this time let's invoke the monitors by clicking on the icon in the ribbon. It's really either way is fine. Just choose the way that you find uh, most comfortable to you. Now we're going to monitor flow uniformity on this face. I mean, uh, in order to have an effective filter, you want flow to be distributed uniformly, and we just want to set a monitor for that. So let's click the green check mark there as well. And then let's hit escape two times to dismiss the heads up display. You'll notice on the top right corner, the two new monitor quantities that we have defined show up. Okay, so uh, let's close the uniformity monitor chart. And then let's click on the details to expose the secondary chart for static pressure. And then let's close this one over here. Now this uh, secondary chart or the details chart for the static pressure at the inlet, we will use this to monitor the convergence of the solution progression. Okay, You can go ahead and minimize this list by clicking over there. And let's expose the fluid body again by clicking on the tree. OK, so uh, we're ready to go. And this concludes part one of this tutorial. Please make sure you watch part two, where we will actually run the solution and visualize results. Thank you very much.